today I'm going to be going over blends equivalent of prefabs. So this is using groups. Now if you don't know what a prefab it is, is, it's one object which all the other objects will reference. So if we change the main object, all the other ones will change and this allows you to do very easy management of your assets and so on. So you get a bunch of lampposts and then you put a light on them or something and then all the lampposts will get lights. Of course, Blender Game Engine can't handle many lights. That example wouldn't work. But for a lot of things, you can do it like this player thing I have over here. You can just chuck the player in if you want one. Or you can have multiple objects all in one and it will work really well. So as you can see here as well, you can have moving things as long as you set them up correctly. You can do lots and lots of things. I absolutely love groups. So we're going to go ahead and learn how to do this. So if we come over here, I have this other scene, which is just a basic one with a cube. And the cube goes up, and it's just a basic one. Now, we want this to be everywhere in the scene, and we want multiple of them. But if we duplicate it, we'll get problems with it loading in slow, and uh, using up memory where it doesn't need to, and room because we have more objects than we need. So we can go ahead and we just parented those, and we group them with Control g Now, I'm going to give it a different name. So I'm going to call this cubes. Now this is going to be the object we can select down from the groups list which will be useful. Which is also another great way of asset management. So if we come down to group instances you see we have this cubes one right here. Now what you see is we have a one that works exactly as we had it before. But it's uneditable. You have to go to the other other the main object to edit it. But the great thing about this is you can have lots of them and you're saving on resources because you only have to load it from one you're not having multiple hundreds of cubes if you have hundreds of these you don't have hundreds of different cubes you just have one cube that they're all referencing which is great for loading times and file sizes and everything like that so you should definitely do this if you can have an object lots and lots of times um it's absolutely going to be really useful and you can see you can even scale this stuff up and it still works but it's not actually scaling the main object up and you're still referencing the old one but the other great thing about this is you can go ahead and you can change the other object so if we were to change the other object what you'll see or objects what you'll see is it will edit in the other scene so if we rotate that and change that little bit up the top we just did before, you see all the objects have updated. And this allows you to change an object that you have multiple of in a scene very, very fast. And I'm sure if you use this to its full potential, you could be saving lots of resources and lots of time with objects. So if you have any questions about this tutorial or ideas for upcoming tutorials, go ahead and comment them down below. But if you want to get new tutorials every single week subscribe on youtube or go to blenderreel.com and you can find all of the tutorials here